Shalom and God blessings, people of God. I want to greet us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I want to, you know, continue the message I tried to share with us concerning the worship that is acceptable unto God. I have talked about um, the false worship system, the celebrity status worship system that is going around the false Jesus movement worship system. I want us to talk about the worship that is acceptable unto God because many people carelessly enter the presence of God and they think that their worship has been accepted by the Lord. No, there is order, there are order that there is an order that God gave for our worship to be acceptable unto him. We thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. I plead the blood of Jesus, O oh God. As we enter into your presence, O oh God, I plead the blood of Jesus. We put on the garment of righteousness. We put on the whole armor of God. And I pray, O oh God, King of glory, that, O oh Lord, as I share the word, that, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit shall give me you know, grant me the grace, the wisdom, the understanding to communicate your, oh God, your word and grant your people insight as to worship you, present to you the worship that is acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus. People of God, I want to <clears throat> remind us that to worship God, holiness of heart, Holiness is at the root of worship unto the Lord. The priest, when the Lord, um, under the law of Moses, when the Lord, you know, the, those things are pattern of the new. Those things we see in the Old Testament or under law or before the law are pattern of the New Testament. So when the Lord set apart the Aaronic priesthood, for to minister to reach come closer to minister unto him on behalf of the house of Israel we saw that the one of the one of the requirements is that they had um they call it meter or something they used to cover their head and on it is an engraving that says holiness unto the lord so the worshipers of the lord the true worshipers a holiness unto the Lord. The Lord said that, um, the Lord Jesus said that the time is coming when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. And then after uh, the Lord said that he will rebuild the tabernacle of David and all his rings, so that the rest of the mankind shall worship the Lord. So when the Lord Jesus died and was raised from the dead, I will talk about Revelation chapter 5, you know, about this scroll that the Lord Jesus broke the seal. Because of the breaking of the seal, the Lord Jesus has redeemed us and qualified us to become priests and kings and that we shall rule with Christ. So as priests of the Lord, we shall be able to come into the presence of the Lord and minister unto him. Those are the, um, something that the Old Testament people or under the Lord, they did not have such privilege of entering into the Holy of Holies to minister unto the Lord. But David, during his own time, when the tabernacle of David, he opened that. Because that's why God said that he will rebuild the tabernacle of David. Because the tabernacle of David was the tabernacle where the Levites were, you know, where the Levites entered into the Holy of Holies. And they ministered unto the Lord before the ark. It didn't happen under the law of Moses because, uh, during the time of Moses, because the, the, the people entered, the high priest of Israel, Aaron, and his descendants were entering. The, that is why they say um, Yom Kippur. They entered into the holy, most holy place once a year. Now, through the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, we are made priests and kings. That's why Peter said that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. So the people that are set apart 
to bring unto the Lord sacrifices in honor, sacrifices that are pleasing unto him. Because when sacrifices are brought unto the Lord and it is pleasing unto him, it becomes a sweet aroma. The sacrifice that God accepts. I want us to quickly look into the word of God. At the foundation, first of all, I want, to, I want us to understand that when we present ourselves to worship the Lord, it is not about our feel good. That is one mistake some people are making. About feel good. It is not about our feel good. In Psalm chapter 50 verse 23, the word of God said, Whoso offered praise glorifies me. And to him that ordered his conversation aright, will I show the salvation, the salvation of God. So, it is not about our feel good. It is our presenting ourselves unto the Lord as living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. So, at the one of the requirements of presenting to God an acceptable sacrifice is blood offering. I'm not going to exhaustively talk about this, but we know that in the time of Cain and Abel, Cain's sacrifice was not accepted, but Abel's sacrifice was accepted because it was not a sacrifice made by faith. It was a sacrifice made by faith. A sacrifice whereby he all offered God's sacrifice in his time, in God's own time. And because it is a sacrifice that whereby the blood, the blood that he offered became a substitute for his life. He offered a, um, a lamb without blemish because that's one of the requirements of the blood sacrifice. It must be a lamb without blemish. And because it is a lamb before, that means that it's innocent and pure. And then the innocence of that animal becomes a, a represent, God used it to substitute for the righteousness of his people. So under the law, this blood requirement was to be made by Aaron during the law, time of Moses before he would enter into the Holy of Holies. The blood of the animals have to be sacrificed at the brazen altar of, inst- uh, of brazen altar and burnt and completely burnt and the blood had to go be placed upon the altar of incense where sacrifices of praises are made, sacrifices of thanksgiving, prayers of intercession, are made in that incense, burning of incense. And when this burning of incense are made, then he can now enter into the most holy place with the incense, with the offering. These incense are sweet smelling unto him. You in this incense we have the incense of frankincense, which means purity of heart. We have incense of Maya, which means self-sacrifice. We have incense of aloes, intimacy with God. Incense of Gab, Gabanum, all their names of those incenses are beaten together and they become, they raise as smoke as everyone enter into the presence of God and they become real you know, sweet smelling sacrifice. So the first thing that is offered unto the Lord is the blood. When everyone enters into the most holy place, he takes the blood, he took, he, take, he, he took the blood of those animals that have no sin, that have no blemish and put them up on the mercy seat. The blood makes atonement for us. The word of God said that the blood makes atonement for us. So when we enter into the presence of God, the Lord Jesus became the Lamb of God, the ultimate Lamb of God. His blood makes atonement for our sins. Therefore, we enter into the presence of God completely clothed with the righteousness of God, completely clothed when we enter through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we must enter into the presence of God with the blood of Jesus Christ. The word of God said that the blood speaks for mercy. And because of the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, as we enter, we lay down our lives unto the Lord as living sacrifice and clothe ourselves properly with the whole armor of God. You see, God said to Aaron, 
God in the garment that God asked Moses to make for Aaron. You know, that garment, every part of the garment had, you know, speaks about Jesus Christ. So there is the garment of righteousness, and that is the linen garment that is to cover their nakedness. The Lord said that everyone's that neck that garment has to cover their nakedness so that when we co- they come into the presence of God, their nakedness will not be seen and they be slain before God. So we have the garment of righteousness that Jesus gave to us because he gave us his imputed righteousness. Jesus became our righteousness. So when we enter into the presence of God to worship him, we have to put on the whole armor of God. We have to put on the garment of righteousness. We have talked about entering with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now we also have to acknowledge the garment of righteousness. We enter into the presence of God so that our offering, because the garment of righteousness, Jesus has become our justification, our righteousness. So we enter through the blood of Jesus Christ. We enter with the garment of righteousness as we confess our sins. And we present ourselves unto the Lord as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. How do we do that? You know, in the sacrificial system, we see that the Lord asks that every part of the animal must be, you know, cut into pieces. When they cut the animals into pieces and lay them on the brazen altar, we see that um, the animals inside, the kidney, the um, intestine, the the lungs are to be brought out and cl- and washed in the water and lay at the and be laid at the um, on the brazen altar and the fire will have to burn everything, burn everything, burn both the legs, the head, the every part of the and when this fire is burning all these things, they rise as sweet smelling aroma before God and when this is acceptable. That is why Abel's sacrifice was accepted because this represented the burning of, of all these things say that my sins have been burnt on this altar. So the fat of the animals presented to the Lord is food made by fire unto the Lord. Because that's why all fats belong to the Lord. Now, what does that mean to us? It means that as we present ourselves unto the Lord, we have to lay our lives as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We present our bodies. We present everything inside us. The Lord Jesus said, we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. We have to love the Lord our God with everything inside us. That is the burning of the the lungs, the the kidneys, the the heart of the animal before God. So we have to love the Lord of God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. That's what the first commandment. That's the commandment that God gave us. So we have to come to him presenting ourselves before God as living sacrifice, as people set apart unto him, as holy people unto him. That's the way we present ourselves to God as worshippers. As, and we also present the fruit of our labors unto Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we do not enter carelessly into the presence of God. We see that the Aaron's two sons... What their names are uh, the two sons of Aaron they entered the presence of God with profane offering when they entered the presence of God they did not they were not mindful of the holiness of the Lord so what did the Lord do the Lord killed them right there in the most in the holy place the Lord killed them and Moses said to Aaron, That thus says the Lord, that whosoever shall come before him must treat him as holy. And before all the people, he must be sanctified. We must 
treat God as holy. So how do we present ourselves and our offerings before God when we enter into the presence of God? Do we enter carelessly, sing any kind of song we like, do whatever we like, make phone calls, make um, text messages and stuff? The Lord said that whosoever shall come to him must treat him as holy. And before all the people, he must be sanctified. We must treat him as holy. The Lord Jesus said that when we come unto the Lord, we say, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is a dawn in heaven. We are presenting unto the Lord, we are bringing the sacrifice of our lives unto the Lord, and we are worshipping him as it is done in heaven. So the fat offering, the totality of us, is the total love and devotion with thanksgiving that we are presenting unto him, presenting everything inside him unto him and treating him as holy, coming with fear and reverence. Cain did not come to God with fear and reverence like the two sons of Aaron. The two sons of Aaron presented unacceptable offering and um, fire they presented strange fire on the altar of incense god said that such fire should not be presented at the altar of incense so they brought strange fire into the altar of incense so fire came out from the lord and devoured the two sons of Aaron. now i want to say something again about the worshipers of the lord because God is restoring the tabernacle of David with all his rings. He is restoring the Levitical priesthood. I have written a book on that. God is restoring the Levitical priesthood who will worship him in holiness, who will dwell in his house, who will, uh, whose food will only be food made, offering made by fire, whose garments are the garment of holiness, the garment that God asked that Aaron and his and the priest to wear, that garment makes them holy before the Lord. He said that they should make that garment for glory and for beauty. The, that every part of that garment has to be, every part of it must be worn before entering the presence of God. So now Paul asked us in Ephesians chapter 6, understand that we are to put on the whole armor of God so the whole armor of God is the same garment the garment that Aaron Aaronic priesthood was wearing had been given to the body of Christ so we have the garment the mind of Christ that is represented by the uh, the mind of Christ the garment um, helmet of salvation thank you Jesus we have the, the linen garment, that is the garment of righteousness. We have the belt of truth, which is the effort, the belt that the high priest wears or wore. We have all these pieces of garment. And then we have all the pieces of, let's say, we should wear the whole, put on the whole armor of God including the shoe of the preparation of the gospel of peace as we enter into the presence of God. The righteousness of Jesus, because we are putting on the garment of righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus will be our justifying righteousness because without this, we are exposing ourselves, our nakedness before the Lord. Therefore, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 18, the Lord Jesus said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that is the righteousness of Jesus, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with eyes salve, that thou mayest see, so that the shame of your nakedness. So God asked ironic, you know, the ironic priesthood to cover themselves with the linen garment so that their nakedness do not show, so that he will not slay them. So the righteousness of Jesus is 
our righteousness is the garment of our righteousness and we have to equip ourselves when we enter the presence of God because our God is a consuming fire now the priest that minister unto the Lord apart from all these garments have to be sanctified from within the Word of God said in Micah 6 6 to 8 where we shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the Lord God Shall I come before him with burnt offerings and with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and love mercy and walk humbly before the Lord. That's why the Lord said in Psalm 50, 23, Whoso offered praise glorified me, and to him that ordered his conversation aright shall I show the salvation of the Lord. Now, the Lord has to sanctify. The people that worship the Lord are sanctified people. Are sanctified people. The Lord has said that he is going to, in the gathering, in the, you know, in the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David, in the restoration of the Levitical priesthood, the Lord said that he will stand, that he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto him an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in days of old, as in the former years. The Lord Jesus prayed for us in John 17, 17, that the Lord should sanctify us by the word, for the word is true. Jesus Christ sanctified himself, you know, according to him, by their sake, I sanctify myself. He kept all the laws of God perfectly. And he asked God that through his word, that we be sanctified. Therefore, we are asked to present ourselves unto the Lord as living sacrifice, you know, holy and acceptable unto him. So that the Lord will continually sanctify us, confessing our sins before the Lord and putting on the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. That the Lord will sanctify us so that our offering, our worship, praise worship, shall be holy, shall be acceptable, shall be pleasing aroma before him. The Lord God is the consuming fire. And there are many places, um, David, and um, Isaiah, the prophets, you know, they talked about who shall enter into the presence of God. How to enter the presence of God. Who shall? First of all, let us read Hebrew. You know, the presence of God. So you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God. When we enter the presence of God, we need to recognize where we have come. People just mount the altar and do things they like. Some people just go and live. I was surprised that in some churches that most of the people that are called worshippers are living with their girlfriends and living in sin and they come to the presence of God. Isaiah, okay, let me read Hebrews first. Hebrews 2, 12, 22, 24 says, You have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. And then Isaiah 33, 14 to 16 says, The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning? He that walks righteousness, he that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing of evil, he shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munition of rocks, bread shall be given him, his waters ashore. God is a devouring fire. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and not take him for granted. When he, when he revealed himself to Moses, he said to Moses that nobody that has seen his face 
has ever seen his feet and lived. Then he said, There is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see the back of me. So God revealing himself to Moses by putting him in Christ. So Christ is our mediatorial covenant. The blood of Jesus, as we enter the presence of God, the blood of Jesus speaks for us. The blood of Jesus testified for Abel. When Abel died, the blood of, you know, the blood of Abel was speaking. Why? Because Abel made a sacrifice. So the blood of that sacrifice was speaking on behalf of Abel, that Abel was righteous before God. He could be that he had some mistakes that he made, but because of the blood of the animal that he sacrificed, his sacrifice, his righteousness was accepted before God. And the, his blood speaketh before God. Now, the blood of Jesus is speaking for all humanity. The blood of Jesus speaketh mercy for us. So when we enter the presence of God, we come through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because God is a consuming fire. God has ordered that his altar, uh, his, his house is a holy place. That no uncircumcised in heart and flesh shall enter into the house of God. It is not a place where people will carry their idols, their fake Jesus, and enter the altar and climb the altar and entertain themselves in the name of praises and corrupting the altar of God. That is why the presence of God left the um, temple of Solomon. All kinds of things were coming into that temple. Eventually, the Lord could not stand it anymore. We are to reverence the Lord. We are to worship Him in spirit and in truth. To bring Him the acceptable offering. And when we uh, present the offering unto the Lord, we present ourselves. We present our heart. We serve God with spirit and in truth. David also said in Psalm 24, Who will dwell in the holy hill of the Lord? He that has clean hands and pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness of, uh, from the Lord of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek thee, that seek thee, O Jacob. Then he said, lift up your head when you get for the king of glory comet. The king of glory comet because his times have been met. David Tabernacle was a tabernacle that replicated the system of worship in heaven. So he saw the perfection of all things. He saw how God is worshipped and referenced. He saw holiness. He saw the four angels, the seraphs that glorify the Lord, that declare his holiness 24 hours a day. And they continued and they covered their faces with two wings, they covered their faces. Isaiah saw this something in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. So they worship the Lord. They glorify the Lord in holiness. The word of God says, as they speak holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The post of the temple, they move at the sound of the Lord's holiness. We are called to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and in holiness. The true worshippers of the Lord, they have their own attire. It is still available up to today. That's why we see choir robes. And those choir robes, the choir people, they wear the robes only when they enter the chamber, when they enter the to minister unto the Lord. And before they go leave the church, they take those robes and put them in the holy chamber. A chamber meant for those robes before they ever touch people. Because the robe is what God ordained. God ordained that these people that serve him must be set apart. Recently, uh, I think it was two days ago, uh, okay, two days ago, I was right awake. I was just sitting like this. Suddenly, a flash of vision came to me. And I saw a king, a highly respected and honored king. And suddenly, I saw the people that attend to the king were 
set apart. They are set apart. The people that attend to the king, I saw them that they are on uniforms. And they are on uniforms and they are set apart. Nobody, nobody approaches them. Nobody touches them. Their services are unto the king alone. They are, nobody messes with them. Nobody insults them. This thing, this revelation came within a second. Piam, piam, just like that. And immediately the comprehension came upon me. We are called the apple of the Lord's eyes. And whosoever touches the apple of God's eyes, touches the Lord. So as the apple of God's eyes, we are to honor the Lord. We, so we who are called the priests of the Lord are called holiness unto the Lord, set apart only unto the Lord. And the Lord said, touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. These people, their food are, these things shall be restored in the Levitical, in the tabernacle of David, in the Messianic kingdom. The priests, their food are only offerings made by fire. The offerings made by fire, that is, the tithes, offerings, first fruit offerings, and all those offerings that are brought into the house of God. Because the Lord is their portion. So the people that worship God are set apart. Now, apart from those people that are ministers unto the Lord direct, every born again child of God is called unto the service of priesthood. Besides the Levitical priesthood, every child of God is a service. So that is a that is a general praise worship. Now, when you come into the presence of God, especially also those who play are ministering in a fire. They are supposed to properly attire themselves. I mean, physically attire themselves with right attire. Honoring the Lord, lest our dress code. I think I will talk about it. Let me let me um, talk about it in a different video. But then, as we talk about honoring the Lord, honoring the Lord. As we enter into his presence, I talked about we make sure that we are not distracted in the presence of God. That's why the all ushers and the people that are, you know, standing at the gates to make sure there's a proper order. People don't move around anyhow because so that they will not dishonor the presence of God. The Bible said when you come into the presence of God, let everyone, you know, be in order, keep silent before the Lord, for the Lord is in his temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Now, you don't do the things you like. We are in the presence of God. You reverence him, you honor him. You give him the pray, the honor. When you come into the presence of a king, you do things that are pleasing to the king. There are dress codes in the presence of king. There is a way to talk. I heard about um, the Queen of England or something like that. You know, okay, let me just say the presence of a king. When you are before the king, you don't open your mouth to talk until you are talked to. You don't. There are a lot of a lot of rules that are not to be broken in the presence of the king. So when we call, the Lord said that I am a great king. That's why God asks um, the Levites. He said. A son honored his father, and um, a son. You know, let me let me look for it in the Bible. In Malachi chapter one verse six, the Lord said, "A son honored his father, and a servant his master. If I then be a father, and there, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear?" Said the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name. And you say, "Wherein have we despised your name?" You know, so the Lord is saying here that he is still pointing to his honor. Actually, the Lord is talking about here the kind of offerings they are giving to him. And he asks them that kind of offering they are giving to him. Let them go and give it to their governors or their kings and see whether they will accept them. Because they were offering wrong offerings, polluted offering, you know, 
profane offerings unto him. They were offering things that do not the lame, the blind, you know, things that they cannot even give to their they honor their presidents, they honor their governors, their kings more than God. That's what God is saying here. And the Lord said in verse 10, I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Then the Lord said, For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same shall they shall my name be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name. And pure offering for my name shall be great among the hidden, says the Lord of hosts. So the Lord is saying that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, his great name shall be praised. And we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. We are to, I will talk about offering in another time. We are to present, as we present ourselves unto him, we present a, a no acceptable offering unto him and we honor him his presence being quiet in his presence not doing things we like we honor his presence keep ourselves keep our mouth shut not come to the presence of god and be talking some other things or planning how to um what we do after service we give god we love god with all our heart with all our soul with all our might when we come to worship him we worship him in spirit and in truth and then in our private lives we live our lives a sacrifice unto the Lord so that our offering that's why he said he will purify the sons of Levi and you will purify them it's coming like a refiner's fire and a fuller soup and you will purify the sons of Levi so that the offering of Levi will be acceptable unto him so that they will offer him offerings in sacrifice in righteousness for from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, his name shall be great. Thank you, Jesus. Another thing is, I've talked about distraction. I wanted to talk this about in another video, but the Lord asked me to talk about it now. The clothing. What do you wear when you come into the presence of God? God gave us the clothing, you know, the way we, I have talked about choir members and choir robes. Those who don't wear choir robe, what do you wear when you come into the presence of God? First, we need to understand that it's a code of dressing that the Lord gave to men and women. So, he said that men wearing women clothing and women wearing men clothing, both abomination in the sight of God. One day I was worshipping along with a particular choir on YouTube and as I was looking at them and worshipping with them the woman sang after as he was singing the camera showed her from head to toe and as she was showing her feet I saw that she was wearing a you know a very straight a very fitting pant and while we were looking at her immediately a man appeared and the man's pant fit him the same way the woman's pants fit him the lord asked me what is different between this man and this woman no difference both of them look like man to me and the lord said to me that women are to wear an attire that belong to women and men are to wear an attire that belong to men so the bible said it is abomination inside it is true that the culture has made it look like it is you know acceptable before god it's not acceptable before god i personally you know the lord is now working on me in this area too from this time that the lord has spoken to me i make sure that even as a minister that i make sure that i wear the proper clothing ministerial clothing and make sure that i do not just dress anyhow to enter into the house of god and the word of God said that, you know, certain clothing we wear, that's a place it said something in the New Testament about for the sake of the angels. For the sake of the angels. So the, the angels can differentiate between man and the woman. So we put on, so the choir, I was also listening to look and work in Mason together um, with, uh, I think, that's a particular group of song 
worshippers that are worshipping their songs are all over the world. I mean, they maybe they produce even song more than other ministries. But one day, as they were worshipping the Lord, I looked at the woman. She looked to me naked. This woman is known the whole world as a powerful worshipper. She looked to me naked. Why was she looking to me naked? Though she was wearing leggings, but she wore something that stopped on her lap. That is on um, above her knee. It stopped very up. So each time I look at her, what I was seeing was nakedness. Even though she was worshiping and leading millions of people, I kept seeing nakedness on her. So those are since then I took away my eyes from I closed that. So if it was like that before me, that means that that worship was not acceptable to God. So there are things that God looks into for our worship to accept unto Him. And when we worship God in spirit and in truth, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, we are releasing sweet aromas of, first of all, we present the blood of Jesus as our sacrificial blood, the blood that speaks our, our righteousness, put on the garment of the righteousness of Jesus. We present our soul, spirit, and body before Him as living sacrifice, and we are presenting to him our offering and it smells like mire the sweet smelling sacrifice of mire which says uh, which speaks of self sacrifice is we present our offering with pure heart it is frankincense unto him it smells like frankincense and these are sweet smell before the Lord we present our humility before him the offering in humility we presenting ourselves in you know, intimately unto him with one heart, with one eye, like the eye of a dove, with one eye, single focus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we present our spirit, soul, and body unto him as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. We present our offering by faith. Faith, is it called a nature or stacked? I don't know which of the two, you know. The, the aroma that is released unto the Lord, either on nature or stacked. These are all... These are spices that are pray, that are beaten together in the altar of sacred on the uh, altar of incense. The Lord asks the priest, the Aaron, to beat all these spices together, and when he you know and burn them on the altar of incense, and they rise as sweet smelling smoke before him. So when we present ourselves unto the Lord in sacrifice, in you know, in um um as uh, the you know um denying ourselves, presenting ourselves unto him, burning our lives as sweet-smelling sacrifice unto him. We become a sweet incense unto him. With the blood of Jesus, our sacrifice is acceptable unto him. And he comes to dwell with us. He dwells with, we dwell with him and we are one with him. Finally, there was a time, um, sometime 1993, after the birth of my firstborn in Nigeria and the Lord was taking me through a process. As he was taking me through a process, then he taught me how to focus on worshipping him. So, in one of the times he was telling me to worship him, I saw he showed me Jesus during the days of Jesus when he was worshipping the Lord. And I saw, um, as Jesus knelt down worshipping the Lord, I saw water, pure bluish water, flowing right from the throne of God upon the Lord Jesus and flowing from Jesus back to the throne room. And then I had the word, I and my Father are one. So through worship, we partake of the union, oneness of the Father. We partake of union with Him. The Lord Jesus is our righteousness. His garment, His blood speaks for us, speaks mercy for us. We enter through the blood and His garment is our garment of righteousness. His belt, you know, the effort, the belt of truth, we are tying. We have the shield of faith to overthrow the argument, the uh, accusations of the enemy. We have the sword of the spirit as our offensive weapon. And we enter into with the, um, the mind of Christ, which is the helmet of salvation. And we present ourselves as living sacrifice unto the Lord. And the Lord releases upon us as we present our living sacrifice, even the fruit of our labor. Our meat offering unto the Lord. The Lord fills us with His Spirit. The Lord 
dwells with us and we are one with him we are covered by his glory and we become a covering glory upon the earth we become a covering glory the light bearer of the lord because through us he displays his glory on the earth may the lord this is the restoration of the tabernacle of david and in all his reigns may the name of the lord be blessed may his name be praised let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let it be. Let us worship the Lord in thanksgiving offering, in appreciation for the Lord Jesus being our King's my Redeemer, for the redemption of our souls from death, from hell. Let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, honoring Him as our Father, honoring Him as our Master, as the Creator of the whole universe, as the Sustainer of life, as the Giver of all good things, as the giver of night and day, as the giver of sun, seasons of rain, the giver of everything. And we thank him for he is good, he is generous, and his mercy endures forever. Blessed be his holy name forever. Let him alone be glorified. Let our praises rise in the morning and evening. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>